she said that Kincaid had a conversion van and he used to drive her to this place that was considered lover's lane and it had a, a bed in the back of the conversion van. Tina girl, Tina girl, let me talk to mama. Let me tell you something. This goes to all women. If your husband or your dude got a conversion van, ain't nothing he doing in there but fucking. He buying pussy or smoking crack. Turn my headphone down a little bit. Yeah. 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 Okay, guys, before we get into it, I want to do a quick disclaimer. Uh, the content we have today is going to be a bit serious. Actually, it's going to be very serious. So parental discretion is strongly advised. Additionally, um, some things may come off funny. You may laugh. Um, that's just my, just, that's just my personality. Um, I'm not trying to be insensitive, although I believe being a probation officer for years has made me a bit desensitized. Um, trust me, I am very aware of this situation. Um, I um, have a strong empathy for the young lady, and um, this, series, this situation is not meant at all to be funny. But I cannot promise you that you will not like, at any rate, she did the video about a week ago, right? And um, it was about Ashanti's father and young Stephanie. Now, she's a grown woman now. She's 55 years old. And um, she has serious, what is it, post-traumatic stress disorder from the situation. The interview opened up where the young lady, Stephanie, explained how she met... Ashanti's father. His name is Kincaid for the case of this. I, I think his name was Douglas something, but I'm going to call him Kincaid because that's how she referred to him, right? Um, Kincaid's at the time girlfriend name was Tina, okay? Tina was um, in charge of the dance group at the Boys and Girls Club in some place in New York. I'm not sure where it was, but it was some place in New York. I'm not sure. But, um, you know, it took me back and the story resonated with me because there were a lot of things about this story that really, really touched your girl. Not all of it, but some things that I was like, yeah, that sounds like the 70s. She uh, loved to dance. The girl Stephanie loved to dance. And um, the guy, Kincaid, her boyfriend at the time, would be with the young girl because there were dance ages, you know, groups, you know, you had the very young girls, then you had the middle group, then you had the older girls, right? But the boyfriend Kincaid uh, always played with the little girls. And that's the first sign, okay? There is a problem with a man always hanging around the little girls. And I know you want to be like, nay, it's unfortunate that we have to think that way, but we must protect our children. So the fact that that man was always around them little girls, playing with them, tickling them. Don't touch my baby. I don't know you, nigga. Don't touch my baby. You ain't his daddy. You ain't her daddy. Leave my daughter the fuck alone, but nigga. Because in that time, she spoke about how dysfunctional her family was. It was easy. And that's what predators do. They prey on children of dysfunction. So um, what happened was the mother, Tina, realized that uh, the young girl was, let's say, she was of a lower economic class. So she took a shine to the little girl, right? And what had happened was um, there were times that um, young Stephanie, would be with times Tina. where Kincaid would go to um, young Stephanie's house, be very kind to the mother and very kind to the big sister. Oh, yes, the big sister. Kincaid was hunching on the big sister. I said, what the fuck am I looking at? Is this the black version of abducting in plain sight? What the fuck is going on here? When you're living in dysfunction, 
and she said that her father was an alcoholic. Wow, you know, Kincaid over there. Here you go, Daddy O. Cisco, just the way you like. I don't know if it was goddamn Cisco. While I was rolling, I don't know Thunderbird. I don't know, right? But here you go, Daddy. This is for you. Go over there and get drunk. Miss Jackson, you look lovely today, Miss Jackson. And you smell magnificent. What is that? Is that Gina Tay? Is that Gina Tay, Miss Jackson? <sighs> yes, Miss Jackson, that smells like Gina Tay. Ooh, a lovely scent for a lovely woman. He go over there, he hunch on the big sister, get finished with the big sister, do, you know, wipe her all off good and dandy. Okay, probably throw a couple of bucks at her. And then get small Stephanie and take her to Tina. So young Stephanie speaks about her relationship with Tina. She talked about how much she loved Tina and the way that Tina made her feel. She said there was a time where the cat peed in her shoes. She wore the shoes to school and the children made fun of her. As a result, Tina bought her her first pair of leather platform shoes. Then I don't know why, but I started thinking about this lady that I used to work with that used to smell like cat pee all the time. I was like, ah, ah, like, ah, why she smell like that? Do the bitch got cats? It got to a point where Kincaid would bring the young girl to the home without Tina knowing. And Tina would just look at the young girl and say, what the hell are you doing here? Go home. Kincaid, take her home. And this is where um, I believe Tina needs to take accountability. Because like I said, the problem to me after I left the interview or after I got finished listening to the interview was not Kincaid when it comes down to young Stephanie. It was Tina. How she felt like Tina failed her. And almost, it was like she kind of expected for her parents to fail her because her parents, like she said, was dysfunctional. But she expected better for Tina. So but what happened is Tina would be like, why is she here? Take her home. Get rid of her. Oh, but Kincaid wasn't getting rid of her. Kincaid was hunching on that little girl. Stephanie spoke of other situations where Kincaid would bring her around the entire family. The entire family was like, what's going on with you and this little girl? Why in the hell do you have this little girl around you like this? And I'm saying, baby, your mother ain't just fail you. Tina ain't just fail you. The community failed you. Let me expound. So she first got pregnant by Kincaid when she was 11 years old. The people at the abortion clinic and back then in that time, the 70s and 80s, they didn't really ask questions, you know? At that time, believe it or not, you can get Medicaid, you can get abortions on Medicaid, believe it. They didn't really ask questions. They didn't ask for IDs. It was just, it was just different then. You know what I'm saying? That's why you have to show IDs now for cigarettes because of the 70s and the 80s. A lot of fucked up shit. A lot of kids got hurt. She went to go have the abortion. People was like, are you sure you're in your 20s? And I said at that point, why them young nurses or whoever they are, CNAs, wherever the hell they are, you know, because I really and truly believe that the government placed abortion clinics in the hoods so that they could, uh, is the word euthanize our young girls? What is the word? Is that euthanize? Is it? I don't, is it? What is it? You know, but make sure our black daughters can't have kids. That's what I believe. And a young lady kept referring to because she had um, abortions at such a young age because she had three. She had three back in Cade before she was 15 years old. OK. She said she believed that because she had had these three abortions before the age of 15 and she was so young. That's the reason why she was messed up on the inside. And I was kind of like, okay, baby, is that in your head? Or um, are you attributing the cancer or the stomach cancer? Because she did have stomach cancer, you know, or she is, you know, in treatment for stomach cancer. And I said, is that what you believe? Do you believe that? But like I told you, like I told you, I would never discount the fact that I believe that our American government 
purposefully did things to the young black girls to to it's, it's euthanize is kill them. What is that? Is it sterilize? I don't know, guys. Y'all put it below. I don't know. Y'all be knowing I don't be knowing shit no more. I'm, I'm an old guy. I didn't it. say to that young lady, baby, how old are you? Or, or didn't, you know, didn't check, didn't say, let me call the police on this. When all the family on Ashanti's side, Kincaid's side, saw her with the young girl or saw him with the young girl and didn't say, what the fuck is going on here? Don't bring her around here no more. Okay. All the people, like she's, she reflected back on a time where um, supposedly he was installing radios in the community or in the area. The young girl was with him. She said that eventually she was his girlfriend. He owned her. Everybody is saying this, but nobody is saying nothing. And see, this is the point where I feel two separate ways. It's either... It's way over their head because they haven't experienced it before. So their eyes are closed and they're not thinking it. Or they have experienced it before and they think of the situation as a rite of passage. Okay, it happened to me. It happened to my mama. It happened to everybody mama. And then I'm going to say this, you know, this may touch a lot of people to feel the same, a certain way, but, you know, around the time of the Vietnam War, a lot of them Vietnam vets came back junkies. And molest us. You know why? Because them goddamn girls over there in Vietnam was trying to get paid. Me love you long time. That shit ain't come from nowhere. That saying came from when them soldiers was over there in Vietnam and they was and them little nine-year-old, ten-year-old, eleven-year-old girls was trying to get some money. Them little girls was me love you long then time. She talks about how she was so young during this time with Kincaid that she really and truly didn't understand what was happening to her. And I can understand that, that at that young age, you don't have any experience in life. So in your mind, you think that, is this my position? Is this the part that I'm supposed to play? Because all these adults around me that love me, see me with this man and nobody's intervening. OK, she said she wished it was so many times that people would question it. They would question it and then say, take that little girl home. And on, a, on my life, I swear to goodness gracious that all of them knew what the fuck was the going relationship on. became obvious. Tina, like so many other women do, instead of attacking the father or the. So then it became to a point where the situation became obvious. And like so many other women do, they categorize the little girls fast. Get the fuck out of here. You're ruining my marriage. What are you doing? And shame the little girl. The little girl was so ashamed that she never danced again. That was another thing, you know, because I believe the young lady um, associated something that she loved with the woman that she loved. And she couldn't do either. She couldn't dance anymore. And she couldn't be with the woman who she adored. All because it's Stephanie young. reached out to Ashanti. Now this is pretty bold, Stephanie. I don't, I don't know what the fuck you was thinking with this one. I can't even lie. I don't, I don't know. I don't know, Stephanie. What the, I don't know, Stephanie. What, what you thought? Because if you would have came at me the way that you came at Ashanti, oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Happened was yeah. Uh, Stephanie was on Instagram. She found Ashanti on Instagram, DM'd her and was like, uh, is such and such your daddy? Yeah. How well do you know your daddy? I mean, he's my daddy. What you want me to say? Well, you must don't know your daddy like that because he's a child molester. And first of all, why the fuck would you hit me in my DM with some fuck shit like this, girl? I'm not regular. Okay, I'm Ashanti. Now, I ain't no super ultra mega star, you know, but I am Ashanti, bitch. You out of pocket or like that to me, that that kind of turned me off about Stephanie, because now you're involving her daughter in that fuck shit. You just changed your energy. You just took your energy and you put it on the daughter without cause. You know, now that's something that the daughter has to deal with. And that's not fair. You know, just like whatever issues that Kincaid have, he put on you. Now you have put sent filtered that energy to Ashanti. That's not right. 
That's not fucking right. But Ashanti, being a Libra, she is. She was like, okay, bitch, what you talking about? Let's 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 clear this out. What you talking about? They spoke back and forth. Ashanti said, I tell you what, let's talk about it. Why don't you meet me here and we'll talk about it? Eh, eh. What are they talking about? They want to meet you after you just didn't accuse their daddy of molestation, girl. I don't even know why you tried that. I don't even know why you drove, you know. Number one, Stephanie said that her husband didn't even know where she was when she went to go meet Ashanti, right? Why would you do that, girl? Why would you do You just accused this woman's daddy of molestation, even though it may be true. Because I'm going to say this is all allegedly, because I don't know you, Stephanie. But, girl, I kind of believe you. Oh, that shit's that true. have you, all your girlfriends, your mama, all your aunties, everybody's supposed to be in that blicker with you when you ride up on this nigga and make it happen. You know what I'm saying? Or just don't go. Why would you go? You know, and that told me, okay, she might be a bit off too. Now, she says that she is a recovering addict because that's what she needed to do to control or to deal with her deal demons. Deal with their demons in the same way. You know, I some people eat, some people use drugs, some people fuck away their demons. I don't know. Some people, Why I do you don't need that. to meet her? Why do you need to talk? And what she said was, I just wanted to meet Tina. I just wanted Tina to admit that she knew what was going on between me and her husband. I told you. I don't think it was about Kincaid as much. Now, uh, we're not going to minimalize Kincaid's actions in this situation. What I'm trying to do is explain to you that that grown woman, that 55 year old woman is still at her child because she felt betrayed by Tina. Not by her mommy, not by her sister, not by her daddy, but by Tina. And all she wants is acknowledgement from Tina that Tina let it happen. Now, I, I don't, agree with her res resolve. I don't agree with that. I don't believe that that would fix everything. Um, but I do believe that um, her overall goal was to get Tina, to be face to face with Tina, to cry to Tina. That's what I believe her overall goal was, was to cry. She drive to the designated place for where, you know, Ashanti say, meet me there. And who should stroll up? But the daddy, she got all shaking and scared and everything that she drove away. She called Ashanti. She said, hey, why would you have me meet your daddy? Now, I, I really don't know what was the motive behind that. I don't know. But maybe he needed to meet the woman that was saying that he was a child molester. Now, I don't know if I would do no shit like that. I probably would be like, daddy, you know, it's a woman out here saying that you was hunting on her as a little girl and got her pregnant three times before she was 15. You need to address this. Whatever it is, you need to make this right. That's this, what I would This do. right here, the situation is kind of messed up because I feel like Stephanie was trying to make Ashanti accountable for her father's actions, right? And you can't hold me accountable for Sonny's action. You can't do that because my daddy is like one of the biggest hoes out here. Do you hear me? You hear me? I'm telling you, ladies, I'm telling you, that nigga is a predator. Do you hear me? If you run into a man that's about six foot, six foot one, and he look just like this, run from his no. ass. But anyway, you know, I'm going to say this about Tasha K. When it comes down to her and Lovely T, I don't want to compare them to because they have their own lanes. But what I will say about them is this. I will absolutely always give Tasha K the kudos for getting the story and putting it out there. Lovely T, I don't recall her ever doing interviews. Lovely T is Lovely T. She's good at what she does. Her, um, her, um, her, her, the way that she thinks and her um, way that she delivers her analogies and her thinking and her concepts on situations is solid. I will never take that from her. But Tasha K, she got that gumption. Okay. She has definitely got that gumption. That girl got a star in her eye and she's reaching for it. Now, remember this, the same people you meet on the way up will always be the same people you meet on the way down. Naysayers, my patron loves. Have a good one.